that's a nice that's one. Right yeah. And don't ever try to unlock his phone because he's he swirls it all around the lock thing. You better be glad I didn't have my pocket knife. Why? Because I was going to cut your line. Why would you do that? Because Brandon wanted me to. Oh, did he? Oh, okay. Ten pounds. Ten? Ten. That thing felt heavier than that. Oh, come on now. Yeah. Them scales is off. All of a sudden, one of the one of the poles just just bent right in half. Brandon went went that running down there, um, started reeling in. As soon as he started reeling in, another pole bent down in half. Richard grabbed that one, um, and that's when Brandon reeled in a, a 23 pound redfish. I don't know if you 
got to know from that. I don't know either. Oh, oh the net is breaking and bending. Good Lord. Thanks, <laughs> Brad. <laughs> 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 what a fish. I can't believe how easy he come up. <laughs> After Brandon reeled in that 23 pounder, Richard started reeling his in, uh, which ended up being 19 and a half pounds, and those happened, those were the two biggest fish of the day. This thing, I was just, I was just reeling it in like nothing a while ago. Then all of a sudden, it started. I mean, listen, at it, look at it. Look, yeah. I got like off the third gator. Yeah, I was just, I was just playing him. He got that one out of the way. Along with his redfish, uh, Brandon was the only one during the day that uh, actually caught a couple flounders. After fishing all day long, we headed back about 6.30 to the Swindell house uh, where we could grab some dinner and get some rest, uh, get to bed early so we could be up early the next morning. I'd like to take this opportunity now to thank the Outdoor Dream Foundation uh, for giving Brandon his dream, dream weekend um, at the Nemore Plantation and the Crockett Plantation. A week after we went on Brandon's deer hunt, we went down to the Kinlock Plantation for an alligator hunt. We arrived on Friday afternoon and met up with Brad Jones from the Kinlock Plantation, and he basically told us, let's get it done tonight. Brad had had uh, a couple nuisance gator tags um, that, we, that we were gonna use for the weekend. 
We got, we got suited up and ready to go out. Uh, we drove out about a mile into the plantation um, and we went to a point where we knew the nuisance alligator was hanging out. So we started throwing a, 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 just a bottle with rocks in it on, tied onto a rope out, out into the water to make it like a, a popper on top of the water. We did that for about 45 minutes. And all of a sudden, the alligator came up, the nuisance one. Um, and, and he just came up slowly, real slowly. Um, and he started towards the bottle. Assisting Brad on this on this hunt was former University of South Carolina football player Rodney Polk, number 45, and Will Rowell. Also with us on the hunt was Brad's two four-year-old twins, Clark and Brantley. And uh, for 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 kids that do this, uh, that live on this plantation every day, um, they they were so excited. They they just wanted all they wanted to do was catch a gator. <laughs> After we got the gator out and on land, uh, we measured it. It was 10 foot, 2 inches long. He shot one arrow. He not Heck, if he's all the way straight, 10 foot, 2. 10 foot, 2? Yep. Later that night, uh, while we were skinning the gator, um, Brad got a little, he got a little curious, wanted to know what the gator's been eating, so he did a little, little investigation himself um, and checked out the, the stomach of the gator um, amongst a, a bunch of stuff that they found in there, including some glass and, and old, older stuff. Um, they found a bird band from a royal tern that had been tagged back in 2001. Um, we, we found this out because we called the number on the band and, and they gave us all the information and, and that's what it was, it was a royal turn. They emailed Brad and my son and myself um, a certificate saying when the bird was banded and where it was banded. Um, it was in, in upstate North Carolina somewhere. Um, it actually stated on there when it was banded it was too young to fly so it, it was a pretty it was a, it was an older bird 
uh, when, when the Gator got it. But it was just, it was kind of neat because you could see, I mean, even Br Brandon wears it around his necklace now, um, the, the bird band, um, because it's just, it's just real neat. Saturday morning, uh, we went and ate some breakfast and then we headed back to the shop. Um, and, and Brad's two children um, had found a rat snake and they were playing around with, they were, you know, they, they love snakes. They know what kind of snakes are venomous and non-venomous. Um, and they wanted Brandon to hold it. So Brandon, you know, he grabbed onto it and it was crawling all over his arms and everything. And he liked that pretty much. He thought it was pretty funny. Um, little did we know that uh, our cameraman, Greg, was um, terrified, to say the least, of, of snakes. Um, and Brandon thought it would be funny, and it actually was. Um, he came up behind Greg, and he touched Greg's arm with that snake's head, and, and just the look of fear in Greg's face. I have never seen that before. And Greg jumped, and he would not, no matter where that snake was that whole time, Greg had one eye on that snake. He knew exactly where it was in that building the whole time. We got to Gator Friday night, so um, we we're, we're gonna leave Saturday evening. Before we left, um, Brad had put on a snake show for us. Um, and, and it was really cool because he had all these different kinds of snakes from South Carolina and Georgia. Snakes that he found on his property, venomous, non-venomous. Um, and he put on a whole presentation for us. Um, and it was very, very informative, um, very educational. And, and Brandon just loved it. Um, it, it, it was just a real, really good presentation. A quick little background on me and how I got involved with snakes. I grew up deer hunting on the PD River up Marlboro County. And I was always taught that you eat what you kill. Only kill if you plan to eat it. And actually the club was a dog hunting club. And it was all about hunting for food. The guys that were members we would actually, you killed a deer, if there was 20 guys, we'd lay the meat out on the table. If there was only 10 pieces of meat, we drew numbers. If there was a blank in there, you drew a blank, you got no meat. So I learned at an early age that wildlife should only be taken, harvested for food. That's how I was taught. Is that how, I mean, that's, that's good ethics, that's the right thing to do. Is that anybody else raised that way? You know, we teach that. Hunting is a lot of fun and a sport, but the real true meaning that I believe and was taught was that we hunt for food. And that all kind of went out the window when it came to snakes. You know, I found myself hating snakes. You know, and we killed snakes and just, I saw people chop them up with hoes. I saw them try to wreck nice vehicles, trying to run one over. And why was that? Why do you think people hate snakes? They don't know anything about it. So it just came upon me one day because I'm always different than everybody else, I guess. I said, you know what, why am I killing these snakes that I know nothing about?